Hello everyone, it's your YouTube user i80386SX and this one falls under the category of vintage computers. Uh, I do own things other than compacts and HPs. Uh, we're looking at today is an IBM ThinkPad 380Z Pentium 2, 96 megs of RAM. Decent sized screen for this era of computer, but IBM's always built their stuff really well. So, what am I gonna do with this computer exactly? Well, this is more of a barbet type video, meaning you might at some point settle a barbet on a couple of things you can and cannot do with Windows and T4. The first one of the two, if you notice, there's this card. Pull it out. What does it do? It is a wireless LAN, wireless PCM CIA A open card. And just for prosperity, it is a AOI 701U. Put that guy back in. I think I'm gonna have to restart this computer because Windows NT is just a pain in the rear. All right, let's see what we can do. So the card is in. Let's see if we can get to the internet. Uh, we gotta do all that fun stuff first. So we will do all that fun stuff first. Even though I did all this fun stuff before the video started, but even had a co-worker that she swears up and down she got a Windows 95 computer to go on a wireless network. Yes, Windows 95. You heard that correctly. Haven't really followed up on it, but I'll have to ask her one of these days and see if she remembers exactly what card they used. Uh, I'm not sure if it was something that was offered by AT&T U-verse at the time many moons ago. So that's where she worked or that's where we worked. But, and I'm going to restart this computer. Just pulling out that card was not a good idea. Yeah, this laptop actually runs Windows NT4 pretty well um, for being a early Pentium 2. I haven't seen some compact Evos, Pentium 4 era, that had some NT Certificate of Authenticity stickers on them. So, very versatile operating system with a lot of quirks. It's a really beautiful IBM ThinkPad laptop for all these years of sitting in storage. The CMOS battery was good. Got it years ago. All right, I think we're gonna... Mm. 
And, all right. And uh, this little, the wizard has come up and detected a card. We're still, we still have a problem though. I, I will show you. We are associated with a wireless access point called A-Open. And your encryption options are pretty limited, but well, you're not gonna put a computer like this on the, on the internet anyway, other than for bar bets and little network transfer type things. Anyway, so let's see what it's barking about. does get out to the internet. And, well, let's see if we can try a different website once. I might regret this. I am regretting it already. Let's try Google. It does get to Google. I did up Windows NT4 originally came with Internet Explorer 2.0 basically unusable even in 1997 it was basically unusable and we get to trees go to Wikipedia see if it gets me that far on this browser yeah it's not gonna let me go there I'm trying to see if I can find anything else to go to just for Yeah, anything that's HTTPS is just not gonna go. Oh, I know what. Obscurity may or may not exist yet. It's the old Pittsburgh Steelers website. They had a website that as far as I know in 2019 was I think the last time I checked it, it was still up. But I don't think I could find it anymore. Yeah, everything's just basically HTTPS now. Well, that kind of proves my point. On January 18th, or January 25th, 2018. And there is the website. Let's see if it's any good. Yeah, it's finally down. So after 20 years, they finally took it off. But regardless, I think our bar bet has been settled. If anybody questions that, oh, you can't get on the internet or get Wi-Fi on a Windows NT4 workstation, there's your proof that it indeed can. Now, before I continue with anything else at this point, because I do have an open access point, I am going to kill that off straight away. And with magic video editing, I will be right back. Okay, and I am back. So, we have the wireless card out of the way. I have no idea why the utility says that it's still associated, because... I have no idea where it's getting a link from, but maybe we'll do a refresh. And we're going to regret that, I think. <laughs> we'll slap the card back in and make it happy again. Good times. Oh, there we go. No, it died. All right, good. And the link finally went away. Okay, so the other half of my video 
the other barbet, if you will, is that we're going to try a few USB drives in Windows NT4. I have three flash drives that we're going to attempt. We have this one gig Memorex. It does say it has the, I see it in the light, the Travelmate, the U3 crap, if you remember that back in the day. This flash drive, I had that crap removed. And sorry for my profanities for those that get offended by the word crap, but it's a descriptive term here. I have this flash drive from a training a couple years ago when I was in Vegas, two gig. These are both formatted in the FAT partition, not even FAT32. Then we have a newer flash drive, a SanDisk USB 3, 32 gig, formatted FAT32. For those that know Windows NT fairly well, Windows NT4 does not support FAT32 natively. But we'll cross that bridge if we, when we get there. So first thing we gotta do is install the USB stuff. There was a utility, I think it was like vogons.org, that's supposed to work on several computers. So you and I are gonna find out together if it actually works. And we'll just install everything. I have no idea what this computer is doing at this point, if anything. The hard drive light is going. Oh, there we go. Patience is a virtue, I guess. And I know Windows NT4 Everything's going to require a reboot by the time we're all said and done. Alright, that's not a good start. No, it did this. Uh, I was able to get flash drives working in NT4. This was, I was in high school and I tried this. I was successful with it. But I had to mount them as network drives. And I doubt that that did anything. We'll install the FAT32 driver. Maybe. Perhaps I should have uh, probably tested this out first. I have no idea how to install that. Oh, let's see, the read me. All right, that's easy enough. So all to get FAT32 on NT4, we just copy these two files to the system root, system32 driver. So we will give that a go right away here. When NT. And we get one of two things to work anyway. Eh. Hope that doesn't completely roach our installs. That's going to pretty much squander our video. Start. And 
hopefully not hold this camera out. Worse than a potato. There's a video I did on NT server in exchange recently that that one got messy. It was a hour and a half uh, sympathy of fun and pain. With all those error messages, I doubt that this is going to work, but we'll see. I think that's related to the wireless card. I don't give a rip. Well, first thing we'll try. Like I said, I don't think it's gonna work. We'll see if it's even taking up any resources. It's not like a particularly good. Plug the flash drive in. This is my one gigabyte Memorex. No joy to this point. We'll restart this and see if it comes up because there is no plug and play in Windows NT workstation or and everything, and I mean everything requires a restart it feels like maybe it may be a driver from IBM we have to install I don't know but we'll find that out soon enough We'll see if this flash drive even has any signs of life on it. Unfortunately, it is upside down, so it'll be a little bit harder to see if a light pops up, but who knows? It might. Stranger things could happen. I don't see any signs of life in the flash drive at this point. But that doesn't mean once we get into the OS that we won't see such a thing. And no new drive. So I am going to see if I did something wrong here. So I'm going to take this offline then See if there's anything else I'm missing here. But this is not looking good. Well, look at that. We have a removable disc we didn't have before. I'll show you what I did. One, I removed the wireless card utility off of this machine, as I wasn't sure if that was conflicting with anything. But I also reran this executable that I got uh, from Vogons or Winworld PC. You Google that file number or file name, you'll find, you'll find it straight away. I, I'm not actually going to go through this, but I installed 
USB stack, USB HID, and USB mass storage driver. I unchecked the other tubes. We aren't using cameras, and I don't know what an edge port is. So I just took that out. So now, and I will show you that this is no trick. This F drive is a secondary partition that I made. So we're going to copy all our USB stuff to it. Just to show you. There it is. I pulled the drive out. E is now gone. Drive is in. Drive is blinking. We have drive E. So this is far more elegant so far than the solution I found in high school. So I grabbed a random copy of folding at home in a Memtest 86 ISO. So we're going to copy those both over to that F drive. This is my 960 gig Memorex from high school, college, first job, one gig flash drive. And lighting away. And that is oh. and a new icon came in the lower right hand side this little double click that and it shows you exactly what USB drives are connected to the device not as uh, great as uh, Windows 10 or even Windows 2000 but hey if you need something it's really good to know that this exists. And if I take a look at the file size, as soon as it lets me do that, the not a very intuitive file copy program, but yeah, a little bit bigger than what would go on a floppy, but if you probably use a utility like WinZip or WinRAR, you could span it over a few diskettes and or copy it to a CD and call it a day. So let's go look at our F drive and we have our files. So I don't, if you want to eject this, we're going to see if there's an eject. All right, so I guess we're gonna have to pull her out. Next flash drive, we have this one from the D in Las Vegas. Very beautiful place. I recommend you visit there when the pandemic is under wraps. I don't have a light on this one, so I have no idea what it's going to do. But it did show up as a removable disc. We got a couple files on here. I'm not going to do the ISOs because those will take a month Sundays, and I don't want a video that's an hour and a half. As you can see, it's about a 70 meg file that's copying right now. So while I'm doing that, see my USB 3 drive is done copying, so I'm gonna go grab that and we'll just sit and wait for this. And do keep in mind, computers of this era, this is USB 1.1, not even 2.0, so it's going to copy slow. And think of uh, your 10 megabit networks back in the day. That's about what USB 1.1 is without any additional resources using it. Now I have a bad habit of not getting close enough on the camera, so I try to work on that. And that is 
copy to the F drive. So last but not least, we have our SanDisk 32 gig. There you go. I don't think this one has a light on it either. So let's see if that one shows up. This is one I've, oh, we do have a removable drive. Let's see what the properties are. If see if it'll, ugh, I don't know if this one's gonna work, but we'll try it out. So it almost looks like our FAT32 driver didn't copy correctly. So, or this flash drive is not compatible with NT4. This is, is a new flash drive, so. What I'm going to try to do, I'll try to go offline one more time here and we'll see if it's a FAT32 problem or a FAT16 problem. So, magic of video editing, I'll do a little bit more digging and we'll see what we find. Alright, I'm back. I'm going to try one more thing here. There was a FAT32 utility from um, Sys Turtles. And there's one thing I did not try is writing to a flash drive, so let's, we'll give that a try while we're here. This is my second flash drive, the one from Las Vegas. And it looks like it is going to try and copy something. I don't know why it's stalling like that, but oh, there it goes. Yeah, it is really slow, but it is USB 1.1, so. Real nice and slow. Alright. There we go. So let's run this file. You could put this on a three and a half inch floppy or a disk. The sys internals did give a they do offer a read and write FAT32 driver. But it looked like it was a paid version, so I'm not going to pay for that. So, not for the, especially not for this. We just want to read. We don't need the write. I wouldn't think that this would require a program, but we will restart like I expected that to be a thing. Ah, shit. Yeah. set this down. Uh, there's one other thing we can try here that I'm going to show you once this computer comes back up. Trust me, we're not missing much right now. All right, so this computer's back up, so while we're waiting for my other piece that I want to do, which I have to do on a modern computer. That looks 
looks like that's finally done. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. I hope that doesn't uh, impede on what we're going to do here. does say there's a removable disc even though I don't think there's one in there though oh yeah there is all right let's remove that quick so all right so there's supposedly a fat 32 driver installed now so I'm gonna put in the sand disk 32 bit or third fat 32 formatted 32 gig sand disk Nope. So, I'm not sure what's going on here. It's, unless there's some else I have to load here. But that's not looking good. So. Ah, come on. Yeah, it's just a help file. And I'm not going to mess with that. So. Bat 16 flash drives work all day, every day. Remove them like a regular flash drive in any other computer. There's one other thing I want to show you though that's... I'm going to grab another flash drive. China Special NTFS formatted on Windows 10. I have some rando file from an HP computer copied to it. Oh, okay, this may make a liar out of me. I should go back into that. So yeah, it does say NTFS, it's using 64 megabytes. So let's copy this file over. Okay, I did not expect that to work. Windows NT4 has a newer, or uh, actually going, Windows NT4 has a much earlier variation of the NTFS driver on it. it. Even from going from NT4 to its next step, Windows 2000, the NTFS driver was redone from scratch if I understood my history correctly. So I shouldn't have been able to read that file, but... We'll see. Was he able to at least read? Can I write? And this is acting pretty much the same way that the FAT16 flash drives acted. Okay, so that did read and write, so we're three for four. Not sure what went wrong with the FAT32 side of things, but hey, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. This was mostly a video to basically settle bar bets and just screwing around. Um, so just to show you what this computer all has, in case you've never seen a 380Z in action, I think it came with Windows 98 originally. CD-ROM, that still works, because that's what I installed NT4 with. It has infrared, so you can, a form of networking between other computers with infrared or printers. I had a, access to a LaserJet 4050 or 4000, I believe, in college, and I printed documents to it using the infrared, so that was kind of cool. And go around to the back. 
get your VGA parallel serial, all standard back in the day. One lone USB port, power of course. This computer's battery kind of works. PS2. You have your manual sound controls here. You got microphone, headphone, your manual power button, which is kind of unique in its own way. Two PCM CIA card bus. Might be using those terms wrong. And this is where your hard drive would be. And I put a 20 gig drive in there, which is uh, quite interesting because I hope it didn't have anything valuable on it, but oh well. And the speakers, some respectable speakers in the front. I don't have an audio disc handy to, to try anything. And I doubt that I can get Internet Explorer 6 to do anything to make sound, so I am not even going to try it. Let's see what we got for... Yeah, maybe. I don't know if these... Yeah, this sound control unfortunately does not work in tandem with the... Uh, with the analog sound controls on the left of the computer. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much going to be it. So, yeah, that's... So, in conclusion, uh, English teachers are going to kill me for that one. Wireless networking is possible on NT4. Flash drive use is possible on NT4 as long as your flash drives either have the FAT16 or FAT partitioning system on them or NTFS and I that one wasn't supposed to work but hey it's a bar bet just show them this video and for the fat 32 side of it you know I guess I could try formatting this flash drive and in, in NTFS and see if that changes things or if it's a limitation with USB 3 so maybe that's something I can try quick Alright, here we go. SanDisk formatted as NTFS. Oh! This might be a limitation of a USB 3 flash drive. Okay, so. I'm going to do one more Magic of Video editing piece here and see if I can get this to, there may be another partition on there it's trying to read, or we can see if it's a USB 3 limitation. So one more Magic of Video editing, I'll be right back with our last ditch attempt. Alright, I think I found the problem. My SanDisk was formatted as a GPT flash drive. So I tried it again, it's FAT32, yeah GPT wasn't even thought of when NT4 came out, ish that's not looking good.
All right, so we have one more FAT32 drive to try, so there may be a limitation with NT4 and USB3 flash drives. If I get really bored, I'll find another branded USB3 drive and try it out, but I don't have any other ones here at the moment, so then I don't feel like going to a store to get one. Two drives to try because I got in my pile of stuff here, so let's see what this one is. Absolutely nothing. Interesting. That's what I get for trying to remove flash drive one handed. So this is, I believe, FAT32. So yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with the, the FAT32 driver. Yeah, I don't really care enough to, uh, to investigate it further, but maybe we'll do one more thing with the sand disc to see if it's a FAT32 limitation. We should be able to format this thing if it is really a FAT32 limitation. So let's see what we can do here. Now you should be able to go... Oh, that's no good. I don't know if I want to try this. Unfortunately, the flash drive in question doesn't have any uh, lights on it to determine if anything's actually happening with it. But I think at this point we beat the horse to death. And in conclusion, for real, sorry again, English teachers, grammar Nazis, and everybody else out there that's offended by that. If you have any well, to review what we're going to do, we had wireless B on a Windows NT4 workstation. We had a 1 gig FAT formatted flash drive, a 2 gig formatted flash drive, and one other flash drive that was formatted NTFS. They all came up. I was able to read and write to them no problem. The USB 3 one looks like it's probably not going to work with this machine. So, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, curiosities, or constructive criticism, feel free to drop them off in the comment section and I will answer the question to my best of my abilities. If anyone figures out the FAT32 mystery with NT4, please tell me, because I'm genuinely curious to find out what I did wrong. So, thank you for watching this exploration mission. Hope it wasn't too much of a waste of time.